Today, the 12th of October, we celebrate also uh, two uh, feast days. One is the feast, uh, especially in the Spanish world, of Our Lady of the Pillar. And also today is the feast day of Blessed Carlo Acutis. Um, I think it's interesting to talk a bit about his life because he's a great model, especially for our younger people. And I have nothing against, of course, you know, Saint Dominic, Saint Martin de Porres, Saint um, and Saint Padre Pio. They're all wonderful saints, but it's something very unique and very special about um, Blessed Carlo Acutis. Is he is a saint of our times, and he is a great model for young people, and um, I think the the Lord is already. Uh, granting a lot of graces through his witness, through his testimony. He was born in May 1991, and he made his first um, communion at the age of seven years. And there was, um, he used to go to daily mass. He had this hunger for spiritual things, to go to church, to, um, to make communion. And he grew up in a wealthy family because their family were business people. He, they, he, was, he was born in London, and then later the family moved to Milan, uh, Milan in Italy. And <clears throat> um, despite that fact that you know, he had a comfortable lifestyle, he didn't make it the center of his life later on. Um, his his uh, parents weren't practicing, but um, because Carlo wanted to, you know, go to church and learn things about God, his mother um, returned to the faith because she was a lax Catholic. When he was um, seven years of age, he said um, the following, he says, always, to be always united to Jesus, this is my program of life. So we can see that even at a very young age, uh, he had this desire to belong completely to Jesus. And he said also, sadness is looking at ourselves. Happiness is looking towards God. These are very, very wise and very profound statements from just a young, this young boy. And um, around that time of seven years of age, when he was in a church, there was a procession inside the church of Our Lady of Fatima. And on that particular occasion, um, he had an apparition of Our Lady of, of Fatima, and she told him uh, to, to consecrate his life to her. And so he did that. And... Um, <clears throat> From that moment, his two, the two centers of his life were, of course, Jesus in the, the Eucharist. He went to Mass almost daily. Uh, sometimes he was unable because of maybe school commitments. And also, he had a great devotion to the Holy Rosary. Um, as he grew older, um, you know, he uh, continued to live a very virtuous life. There was a very important moment that happened, we'd say, to a, a, a young Indian man who came to, the, to work for the Akutis family um, as a carer for Carlos. And that man, was, uh, he was called Rahesh, and he was Hindu. And he, had, he grew up in the Hindu faith, but he always found it something very, very empty. He just couldn't find fulfillment in that religion. And um, <clears throat> through the, uh, the example of Carlo Coutis, who he was looking after, um, he converted, because Carlo was uh, very friendly, open. He talked about God. Um, he accompanied Carlo to church. And seeing Carlo so recollected in prayer, and um, with that great devotion, kneeling down to be so uh, recollected, um, he um, it sparked off a curiosity. And over the days and weeks with that conversation about who Jesus is and also Our Lady, 
um, this um, man converted from Hinduism to the Catholic faith. Um, he was also, you know, in school, he was always very, very supportive of other um, classmates who were in trouble, who were in difficulty. At 11 years of age, he began to do research on the Eucharistic miracles. And he also had this desire, burning desire, to go and visit uh, Marian shrines and also um, shrines where uh, Eucharistic miracles uh, had happened. And this is quite, I guess, unusual for a boy of his age. Uh, later on, when he was uh, 15 years of age, he, had, um, he fell ill. And his illness was very, very brief. It was over a period of basically two, um, two weeks. He had um, a very, very um, strong leukemia. And um, he fell quite ill. He was in hospital, very, very uh, gravely ill. And um, his mother had some prophetic dreams or <coughs> around his um, before and after his death. And on one occasion, his mother uh, received um, a, um, a message in a dream where it says, Carlo is going to pass away. And in another uh, dream, she had a dream of a lamb that was bleeding, and she heard the words in Hebrew, sacrifice. And she knew it was in reference to her son. While he was very ill in uh, his, about the hospital, he um, offered up his sufferings and his illness for the Pope and for the Church. And he continued to suffer a lot. He had like a lot of very, very intense sufferings. And finally, he died on the 12th of October in 2006. Uh, afterwards, um, Carlo's mother had a dream where uh, St. Francis um, spoke in the dream to her and said, like, you know, Carlos will have a very crucial part to play in the church. And later on, in more recent times, she had another significant dream saying that Carlo has a very, very prominent place in heaven and that when he will be canonized, there will be a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the church, especially among the young people. And so um, he is obviously uh, uh, buried, his tomb is there in Assisi, and it's a, um, it's a very significant place for many people. And um, recently, Pope Francis approved an app, um, of a, uh, a miracle uh, that was um, about a, this a young woman who had an accident on a bicycle. Her mother went, um, she had a very severe head injury. She was going to die. The doctors had given up hope. The mother of this young girl went to the tomb of Saint, uh, Blessed Carlo, began to pray. And from that day, she made a complete uh, gradual recovery. And so um, it was truly miraculous. So what we can see here is the importance of leaving that coherency in our faith. And Carlo is this beautiful, a great light of our times. And that is why we always have to live with this hope uh, that um, holiness is possible. Carlo was not a perfect person. He had obviously a lot of imperfections. He had to overcome himself in many different ways. But his testimony is a testimony of living out that joy, having Christ and Mary at the center of his life. So we pray in a special way today that uh, in this Mass, that he will be soon uh, canonized. The date has to be fixed. It's already been announced and that uh, well, for that revival of the faith, especially among the young all over the world.
Amen.